Hi, Josh. It's Josh from Lake Bell, Minnesota. And you all are watching Trucker Josh Vlogs on YouTube. <laughs> It's raining. Hey! This is what I woke up to. Just getting my bearings straight here. We just gotta go around the corner to pick up my load. That's not the problem. The problem is that I've gotta tie it down and I've gotta tarp it. In the rain. I'll do it, I'll get her done. It's better than tarping in minus 50, I'll tell you that much, but still not as good as tarping on a nice clear day. We're gonna get wet today. Hopefully it won't take too long. I don't know what kind of steel this all is that I'm picking up, but uh, 60,000 pounds of steel that I'm picking up. It's a big one, it's a big one. Taking it all the way to Brandon, Manitoba. hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. Well, thank you, Mandy. I appreciate you letting me know what I already know. That's not Mandy. You're Mandy. Who are you? I haven't given my uh, my new talking e-log here a name yet. I'll have to ask Britt to name her. She's good with that kind of thing. I don't know, I'll just call it e-log for now. Okay, let's go pick this load up. I've been procrastinating long enough. We need to get there and get this loaded up and we need to start heading home toward Brandon. I don't live in Brandon but I live near Brandon, so I'm headed home that way. Towards home, past home, to Brandon, and then back home. Gotta be there. Not day after tomorrow. Wait, what is today? Today's Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. So we're picking this up on a Tuesday. We gotta be there on a Friday. So today, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we got three days to get there. What's that noise? Hi. Calm down. Okay, let me get myself woke up here. I got my coffee already. Just a little one, because I'm just going around the corner. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Hopefully they have an indoor tarping station. That would be great. Following this big forklift here, he's gonna lead me to where he wants me to be. I'm really hoping he's going to lead me to a garage door that's going to take me into a building. Lots of buildings around here. I'd like to be inside one if I could. Alright, so he wants me to go to the right. Okay. Okay, alongside the right here. Okay, okay. This isn't a building. Oh well. Well, I had hoped. I'm going to load it outside. Right here. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Go. Okay. There we go. <sighs> yep. This is gonna be fun. It's starting to rain harder now, and I. They tried to see if I would be able to fit in the door to, to do it inside, but I can't. It's very hard because the freight's supposed to be tarped, right? But they don't have any indoor space to tarp their loads. Like, I, I don't understand places that like that, that uh, they, they do all of their loading outside, but none of their freight can get wet or not supposed to get too wet, right? But it rains from time to time and in wintertime it snows. So what do you do when it's raining? Do you just not work? Work's gotta keep going, right? So we've just gotta get these, they're like steel coils or steel rolls or something. And uh, they made the decision to load me. And I'm just gonna get them covered up as quickly as possible. And take pictures and say that uh, it was their decision. But they don't have any indoor facilities here at all to load this stuff, which is strange. Cause usually when I load up steel, they have a big indoor facility. You pull in, everything's inside. Hopefully everything's all right with that. 
Well, I'm gonna maneuver around on the lot here and I'm gonna put my trailer into their door. Cause I told them we can't load this out here in the rain like this. Oh, and there's a truck coming right now. Of course, right when I need to do some tight maneuvering, there's gonna be lots of trucks in here, right? But yeah, I told them we can't load out here in the pouring rain. I mean, these, these steel coils are gonna get soaked. Cause first of all, we have to put them all on the trailer. We gotta make sure all the weights are distributed properly. And then I gotta tie each one down individually, chain it down, which takes a little bit longer. And then I've got a tarp it after that. So they'll be out in the rain for at least like probably 20, 30 minutes if I hurry, maybe more than that. That's, that's just not good. The customer where I'm delivering to is going to know. <laughs> they're going to see that steel is going to start rusting or they're gonna be, they're gonna be able to tell that there was water on it that they got soaked. So, I gotta do some tight maneuvering around here, get my trailer inside, block their door. I talked them into it. I want my customer to be happy when I deliver these things. So we're gonna do it all indoors. So I was facing this way before, I turned around and backed in here now. And we're inside. So I got work to do now. I gotta be as quickly as I can because I told them I'd be fast, but I wanna do it inside. Not because I wanna keep myself dry, well, partly because I wanna keep myself dry, let's be honest, but mostly because I wanna keep my freight dry for the customer. Let's do it. So this is the load. So I've got them chained down. I'm gonna put the tarps over it now, and then I'm gonna put straps over them on top of the tarp yet. That'll hold the tarp in place and it'll also provide extra securement yet. Each one of these rolls is about 12,000 pounds, just under, well, 11,000, just over 11,000 pounds. Each one of these chains can hold 6,600 pounds of pressure. So I've got two chains on each one, 13,200 pounds, two chains are good for. So two chains are good for each bundle. Got one smaller bundle here that's about 3,000 pounds, I think. All together, we're looking at 22, 33, 44, 55, about 60,000 pounds of steel here. Got the triaxle in the back. And I think we've got this loaded in a way that it should be good. Should be. Sorry, I'm all sweaty right now. I've still got to tarp this thing. But I always pay attention to the air pressure gauges on my trailer and on my truck, and they're exactly balanced out at 50 PSI. That'll change a little bit once I get on the highway and get out of here. Uh, I wiggled it back and forth a little bit just to let it settle, and it's still sitting around about 50 to 55 on the trailer and 50 to 55 on the truck, so about even. So it should be a decent ride, and I shouldn't be overweight really hope I'm not overweight because then I got to come back, untarp it, unchain it, move it, rechain it, retarp it, go weigh it again, and hopefully not have to do it all at once. That'd be a mess. Let's just hope that our scientific brains are correct. I was soaked. And I didn't even have to tarp it outside. It wasn't from the rain, it was from sweat. So uh, it looks like we have 2,400 kilometers or so to go. That's... Uh, for you Americans, I will do you the math for you. Do, do you do the math for you? 2,400 kilometers divided by 1.61. We're looking at 1,490 miles. It's about 1,500 miles or so. Got everything tarped. I just uh, went back here to Petro Pass just to sort of screw my head back on after all that work. Grab a little bite to eat and something to drink. And now we're off to the races. I'm gonna go to Antrim Truck Stop in uh, Arnprior, Ontario, west of Ottawa, and scale it. I'm hoping I'm not gonna be too heavy on the back. I, I told him to put the weight a little further back. I didn't want too much weight on my, my drives because I only have two axles on my drives, right? But I have three axles on my trailer. I can have more weight on my trailer. So I wanted it further back so that it was legal. And according to my gauges, I'm at 43 PSI on my truck. 
and I'm at 40 PSI on my trailer. But that doesn't make sense because I have almost 60,000 pounds of steel on my trailer. The PSI in my air system should be higher than that, I think. So I don't know. According to my air gauges, we're nowhere near being overweight, but 60,000 pounds, I should be a little closer, I think. So we're gonna go to the cat scale there and for peace of mind, just scale it out so that I don't have to worry about getting a big ticket on the way to Brandon. That would ruin my day. For some reason, this whole area here is just busy, busy, busy. You got construction here, you got the Petra Pass over there. I couldn't even fit in there because when I pulled in, it was all full of trucks. Now they're all gone already. But there's like a bird food store over there. Like that green building it says bird feed or something. Bird supplies. And it's just busy. Busy, busy. Ottawa, you guys have an obsession with birds or something? Is there something I need to know? You guys like your birds that much? Like just constant traffic coming into the bird store. Okay, so we're going to go out here. I'm going to show you the load. Well, that guy came pretty close to me. Man. All right. So, this is all under construction here. Here's the load. Now there's 60,000, well, 58,000 pounds under this tarp. 58,000 pounds. And I have the tri-axle, like I was telling you. I just wonder, did I put it too far to the back? Huh, it's hard to tell. According to my gauges, like here, I'll show you. You guys don't believe me? I sort of don't believe it myself. I wanna check it myself. So this is where we have our air pressure gauge. This tells us how much air pressure is in our suspension. It sort of gives you an idea of how much weight is in there. And look at that. 40 PSI. Yeah, right. Really? This whole load, only 40 PSI? I expected it to be closer to 60, especially with the way I positioned it on the, on the deck. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, look at all that. It's way back there. Nothing up here. What do you guys think? I'll show you my pressure gauge in here too. Here. My suspension is fully charged. I'm gonna have to get my power steering going here. There we go. So that you can see in there. Now, check this out. One second. Gauges. 39 PSI now. 39 PSI and 40 on the trailer. Yeah, right. So, when in doubt, scale it. 13 hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. Well, thank you. I haven't gone into my drive time yet today, though I have used up pretty much all of my spare time because it took all of my spare time just to get this thing loaded. Yep, okay. Let's go to Arnprior. See how far we can get tonight yet. It's already pretty late because I took longer than I wanted to. So hopefully we'll get up to uh, Capus Casing tonight or something. I'm gonna take that route because I'm heavy and there's less hills, a little easier on my truck. The old girl will give her a little bit of a break and won't force her to climb the hills on 17. We're all ready to go. Got her in gear. My trusty automatic minivan. Let's go. Catch a break in traffic here. Yikes. It feels heavier than what it's telling me it is. I don't know, I'm kind of anxious to scale it. If it's overweight, I gotta come all the way back here and get them to reload it. Which means I'd probably have to do that tomorrow. Which means I wasted a whole day and didn't get paid a penny. Which way do you want me to go? Right? Okay, I'm going to have to swing this pretty wide then. Nice and wide. Get my heavy trailer around that corner. Okay. And we're moving. Lift off, as 
they say. I'm gonna get onto Highway 417 West. This is the 417 East, this exit here. Towards Montreal. We want to go west. Yeah, that's what I just told them, Mandy. Are you, aren't you listening? She never listens. All talk, no ears. You know, all mouth, no ears. Is that the saying? Talk, talk, talk. She talks my ear off, but when I want to say something, doesn't listen to anything I say. I want to go west. Oh, towards Ottawa, it says on that sign there. I thought we were already in Ottawa. I guess downtown Ottawa. Where Prime Minister Fancy Sock sits. Over there somewhere, to our left. We'll do a little loop to doop here and we'll be on the way. the Antrim truck stop in Arn Prior, Ontario. Scales right dead ahead too. What a good spot for them. What's this Dodge guy doing? Dodge, what are you doing? Don't do it. Don't do it. I knew you were going to try to go right through here. <laughs> I just could just tell by the look at your truck. Okay. Let's see how fat we are. I always shut my truck off at these. So that they can hear you better. Gotta wait for them. First weight or re-weight? First weight? Pounds or kilos? Kilos. Tractor number? <laughs> Told us to pull on. And then here he'll tell us to come inside when he's got our weight. At least I think he's gonna. Okay, we got it. Thank you. We go inside and grab our scale ticket and let's see. Let's see how heavy we are. So I got our weight in kilograms this time. I'll explain why in just a second. It's a nice trailer there. I like that decal package. It's got a Canadian and American flag on there. It does have an American flag on the skirts in the bottom there. Proud to support our troops, lest we forget. I like pulling that. Okay, so we got a parking spot here. 12 hours and 4 minutes of remaining drive time. Thank you for interrupting me. Don't make a habit of that like Mandy. 
tell you what. So I, I got the weight in kilograms this time. Usually I get it in pounds, because usually I'm going to the US and uh, everything there is in pounds. Everything in Canada officially is in kilograms, but really we all use pounds. Like I don't know how many kilograms I weigh, but I know how many pounds I weigh. And we, we use pounds, I don't know why we have kilograms, but the reason I asked for my weight in kilograms this time is because we're going through Canada and I wanna make sure that I have accurate weights because the, the limits here are in kilograms, right? I can have 17,000 kilograms on my drives behind my truck and I can have 23,000 kilograms on my triaxle. Are you licking the bed back there? You look pretty guilty, man. You cleaning it for me? Thank you. Yeah, that's kind of weird, though. You need a treat or something. <laughs> so, uh, let's go see what the results are. Like I said, the steer tires I'm not worried about. They'll be fine. We're looking for our drives behind our truck right here. We're looking for that to be under 17,000 kilograms and our trailer under 23,000 kilograms. A little nervous, a little nervous, won't lie. Let's go check it out. I'll be right back. And it looks like we're good. We're good on our steer axle. We're good on our drive axle. And we're good on our trailer axles. We could have moved those a little further forward though because my drive axle here can go up to 17,000. These, like I said, can only go up to 23, right? So we're still legal, but just barely. So we could have probably put one of those rolls further to the front, added more onto this. So this was closer to 17 and this wasn't so close to 23. But either way, we're legal. 41,280 kilograms. That's approximately 90,000 pounds gross. Too heavy for the US much too heavy for the US, but just fine for Canada. All right, well, I've wasted too much time here already. We need to get going. We got plenty of time to get to Brandon. Well, it looks like we've been sitting here long enough to eat into my drive time already now. Oh, goody. Oh, goody, all right. Okay, let's go. I need my shades, that sun is bright. Off we go. Let's see how far we can get tonight yet. Like I said, I'd love to get to Kappa's casing, to the Flying J there. But we'll see. We shall see. This is Mattawa, Ontario. Close to North Bay. They got a little pull out here for trucks because uh, there's a Tim Hortons right there. I just rolled down my window here and there's just bush out in front of me there. I know it's all dark, but there's bush out there. Listen to that wildlife. Listen to those, what is that, crickets, birds, whatever that is. Isn't that wild? Don't you feel like you're in the jungle or something at night? That's crazy. What do you think, Diesel? We're back here in North Bay. And I think this is where I'm going to spend the night. Already getting pretty late, and I think it's time to call it a night. Get going early in the morning tomorrow. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for hanging out today. Thanks for coming with us. It was a, a long day. We didn't get as far as we could have, but we got a lot done. Tying this load down took quite a while and tarping it. So we have two full days ahead of us to get to Brandon. My wife is messaging me, probably to say goodnight already. Yep. So I better go to bed too. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. It does a lot with the algorithm. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to.